Ohio State. Uh, a little bit like m most teams in the league, with the exception of Purdue. Been really good and uh, had some not so great moments. Um, uh, but had some unbelievable. When they played Northwestern, I thought they were as talented as any team in the league. Um, and uh, they're a team that uh, is, is very typical of Chris's teams. They're always very, very talented on the offensive side. I think they've got the best freshman, uh, arguably, in our league. Uh, Bryce Sensabaugh. Uh, he's unique in that he's physically very, very strong and powerful. Um, 6'6", 240 pounds, he can hurt you from the three, he can hurt you, uh, he's got a really an ungettable uh, fadeaway jump shot uh, going to his left, uh, he makes it a high rate, uh, Chris's team's offensive rebound and they play great in transition and uh, uh, you've got to uh, account for those things, um, but uh, I think we're in a better place than we were last time we met, you know, having a couple of days off. Uh, you know, Matt's obviously feeling better after being sick, um, and um, that um, that break was 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 much needed. But uh, we'll have to uh, play exceptionally well to uh, uh, you know to beat this team. And you know, it's like any any of about 13 teams in this league right now. If you don't play well, you're going to lose. Right. Those two days, I mean, what, what we he's completely off, or like how much interaction do you have with us? So NCAA doesn't allow us to have any any organized anything. Guys, guys might have came in, come in, and, and shot a little bit. Um, they, you know, did some treatments with with Paul if they needed him or whatever. Um, you know, I think it's um, you know I think Matt spent the better better part of a day sleeping, uh, trying to get. Uh, trying to get healthy. Uh, he indicated he slept 11 and a half, 12 hours and woke up for a few hours and went back to bed. Um, so, uh, tough stretch. Um, obviously, we did some good things in that stretch, but uh, a couple days off, now it's kind of get back and get your, get your, your we're right back into game mode. So, uh, game prep, it's not like we have a day to prepare, you know, to, to work on ourselves. It's right back into uh, Buckeyes and, and, and game prep mode. Uh, Ohio State's been great at defending the three ball this year. Is the team going to emphasize getting the ball inside to Dane and company more to get them more post touches? You know, it's 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 fairly interesting when you look at some of their numbers. Um, I think like Purdue took 31 threes uh, against them. I think, uh, on the other hand, Maryland took 13. <coughs> um, so I think you, you've got to find a balance. Uh, Maryland was able to get to the to the foul line a lot. I think I think Northwestern took a lot of threes against them. Um, you know, to me, it's always about shot selection. It's always about taking the right shot at the right time. And you know, whether that's inside or outside, um, you know, we don't always have a specific set game plan to go in. I think it's what they do in their coverages and how we attack them uh, to get the best shot available. And, and whatever that is, we'll uh, we'll see how that plays out during the game. Coach, what are some of the keys to slowing them down offensively? Are there two or three things that you've pinpointed in practice to, to slow them down? Yeah, when they're really good, they're they're, they're lead in transition. Uh, they play really fast. Zed Zed Key is a uh, outstanding rim runner. Uh, he gets a basket, two baskets um, every single game, uh, just running the floor. Um, and you know they've got enough shooting that they they find threes in transition. You've got to keep them off the offensive glass. I think they're always one of the top offensive rebounding teams. Uh, Suing, Sensabaugh, uh, Zed, you can find them when a shot goes up in one area, uh, and that's under around the rim. Uh, those guys do a great job of getting easy baskets. They're talented enough offensively. You can't give them opportunities in those other areas. You've got to be conscious of those areas as well. Brent, when you look back at the IU film, specifically on the defensive end, do you look to more, did you feel there were more significant tweaks that may need to be made moving forward, or is it more minor stuff and just getting guys a little bit of a breather after that tough stretch, like you mentioned? I think it was we were in quicksand. I think it was, you know, and again, Trace is, the one thing that's happened with, with Indiana, in my opinion, with their injuries, Trace now touches the ball every trip. 
every single trip. And that, that guy is as confident as any player in the country. He's, as, uh, he's playing as well as what everybody thought they would when they recruited him. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's yesterday, well, do you double him? Well, yesterday a guy makes five threes. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pick your poison when you have a great player. And, um, but, man, boy, were we slow. We, we were, our reaction time was off, or, or we, just, we just stood around and we let guys, Geronimo and other guys, you know, he had four points at the under eight media. And then all of a sudden we just crashed. And, and it was the other stuff that was, that was disappointing in that game. After a couple of days off, how much has Luke been able to be involved with the guys since you've gotten back, and how's that going to wrap up? He's not yet. He's Luke is still doing everything individually. There's a, you know, he was cleared to come back to practice or cleared to get ready for practice. Excuse me, uh, which involves, you know, now the next step is, uh, <clears throat> is is actual pounding on it, um, doing bowl stuff, doing individual workouts. Yesterday he did play some one on one and two on two where he's actually planting and and uh, doing some of those things. He'll have another couple days of that uh, to, to make sure that the foot isn't sore, that there's no swelling. Um, I think there's one more X-ray, and then if everything's good there, then he'll be he'll be able to come back to practice, and, and we hope sometime, you know, here in the next week, to, you know, six, seven, eight days, whatever that is. I guess when you're able to insert him back into things, what do you feel like he can bring this table? What can he do having missed three months? With Great you question. I don't know. Until we get him in practice, you know, he's been gone since, I don't know, let me scrimmage Kansas, October, October something, I don't know, whatever it was, whatever the day was, you know, so you're, you're, you're talking November, December, you're talking a guy that's been out 10, 12 weeks, minimum 13, I don't know, two months, three months. Um, and getting him involved in practice would be fun. It'll be interesting to see because we, we, we know his shooting, we know his toughness, we know his, his, his rebounding. Uh, those are all things that, that we saw last year, but you know he hasn't done it in game this year. I mean, you're talking about a guy who was uh, utilized last year, but not in major minute roles, and, and, and we'll see what that, what that looks like as we move forward. And I know you recruited Bryce out of high school, is what he's done for Ohio State, what you thought he was capable of, especially maybe the three-point shooting? Yeah, he's the least scorer. I mean, there's, there's, you always look for guys who can, you know, I call them bucket makers. It doesn't matter. I mean, he's, he scores it off the bounce, he scores it in the post, he scores it on the glass. Um, he's, he's, he's an elite isolation player. Um, so, you, you, uh, yeah, they've got a, very talented player, and he's, he's a very gifted offensive talent. Coach, we're going to be talking with uh, RJ Melendez after this. Uh, how has he embraced his role coming off the bench? And have your expectations for him changed at all in, in the new role? He's playing great. He's playing great. He's playing the best he's played all year. Uh, he was very good against, uh, against Indiana. Um, I'm, I'm excited about him. We, we need to, we, he needs to find more time. We need to get him on the court more. Uh, he's, he has simplified the game for him, which is just playing hard and defending at an elite level, which he's been doing. Uh, and now it's just, now the ball started to find, find the bottom of the net for him. And uh, we need that. He, that elevates our team a great deal, is, is his, his ability to, uh, to make shots. That stretch you had to close out the Indiana game at like five points in like a minute and a half. For somebody who's been kind of fighting it offensively, is that important for him just to simply see that happen in a game? Did you guys make a concerted effort in the last two minutes of that to just let him try to get some shots up in the game? Yeah, and I think it, it, it's it's sometimes it's it's a free throw, sometimes it's a layup, sometimes it's a dunk. I thought his dunk in that game was as as a good a feel good moment as there is, and, and sometimes you got to feel good. You got to just find a feel good moment on the offensive end and to see that thing go in. And um, you know he's he's been working exceptionally hard, and like I said, he's playing the hardest he's played in his career. I mean, he's playing extremely hard, and, and now we we uh, you know we get we get we get RJ back 
shoot the cover off of it like we know he can, it gives us a, a completely different element. So I hope that's, um, and I think we're past that, all that, all the struggle. He's, he's, he's come out on the other side of that. Fred, I know you've talked about regularly any team can beat any uh, team, and that seems to be the case year in and year out in this league. But is the parity this year seem unique to this season in the Big Ten? Well, I think right now, what, as of today, one team's ranked and they're number one and none, nobody else is ranked. Um, probably rightfully so, and, and from this sense. I think Purdue's got the best player in, in, in the, I don't want to say the best, but they got the most dominant player in college basketball. And, and no one's had an answer for him yet. And, and um, The thing that I think is a little bit different this year is there's been some teams with some really bad losses, quad four losses, um, and, and maybe that's hurt the rest of the league. But but again, I think the league's a little bit younger than it's been. I think more freshmen are playing. Uh, I think that there's more newcomers in the league because of the portal, um, and that's created. Um, Maybe a little more parity. I don't think the league's any better, or any worse. I think it's, I think it's ridiculous that we only have one team, right? I think there should be seven or eight of us. Um, but I, I, I also understand who does the voting, so I don't put two cents to that. Um, and I think it's it's important to understand that we we're we're, we're, we're we're a good league, and it's and it's really hard, and the games are really hard, and the places, the venues we play, and I I look at yesterday, I mean, what's what's, no offense to Temple, they're good, but they're one thirty, and and they beat Houston at home, who's won, uh, you know, Kansas has lost two in a row, uh, UCLA gets beat, uh, it's just the it's the nature of the beast. I don't think there's a great team. Um, and I think there's a lot of parity, and I think there's a lot of really good teams. And you know, early in the week, Xavier, everybody's talking about how good they are. They lost to to, to DePaul in, in a conference game. So I, I just think it's the time of year, and I don't make anything of it. This league is great. This league has the best coaches and the best venues, and it's really, really hard. And if this might be a year where there's not a dominant. Maybe one dominant team, if you want to look at it right now, but they've also won four or five really close games. So, take it for what it is. It's a great league. Brent, I think you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, going back to RJ, uh, that he was one of the guys who was kind of setting up in a leadership capacity. How have you seen that develop over the course of the season? And is that something you, you guys as coaches kind of brought up to him earlier? How has that developed? Yeah, he's a, he's a guy who's been here. He understands our culture. And, you know, I, I use culture. Probably to you guys get sick of it, but it, it's everything that we're about, and he understands that. And, and yet he's got to he's got to hold himself at times to that that same standard. But he's been great. Um, he's been he, he, he's talking freshmen through it. He's 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 always talking to guys on the sideline about hey, this is something we're doing. This see this, see this. Here's a and he's he's constant communication, which he wasn't early. And when you get that. You get guys talking about us, not about me. And, and that's the important piece to, to, to leadership. And now RJ's wholeheartedly in that. I think we're seeing that with, with Coleman. I think we're seeing it uh, with Terrence Shannon at an elite level uh, as well. So uh, those are all positive mm -hmm. things that make you feel good as a coach. Just one more about the Indiana game. Like, do you, how do you look at that? Now, like, it's, you're not going to be in a circumstance where it's 19 straight days. Like, is it just one of those where it's victim of circumstance? You flush it. Like, what's your, I guess, approach with that game? Uh, we didn't show our team one second of. We talked a little bit about about being tougher because of the moment, because of the situation, and and, and we've got to be th through that. We and, and and we've talked about some things offensively. Um, but um, you know, I mean, 13 or 14 missed layups, 13 or 14 missed free throws, that's, that's mental fatigue. That's not, not, not there. I mean, we make a couple of those layups early, and I mean, think of the ones just Terrence missed. They could, I, I mean, it's just almost laughable. You just sit there and, you know, you know some to realize sometimes it's not your day, and, and whatever that reason is, you just kind of 
move, move on. You learn your lessons from it, and you know when we play them again, we'll bring that thing back out, and we'll 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 try to make the adjustments in. But it's not one to. As much as I hate losing, it's not one we're going to try to really dwell on. You and Chris have basically kind of replaced a bunch of your rotation from last year. Just from a 30,000 foot viewpoint, what do you feel like Chris has done to kind of allow his guys to play free and have success when he's replacing 60% of his lineup and you know, a whole bunch of his rotation? Yeah, I, you know what, I, I think the one thing that we're, we're similar in that, we're, we're both playing freshmen. Um, you know, he's, he's done an unbelievable job of recruiting there. Um, you know, and, and I think that uh, you could argue that he had one of the top freshman classes. Um, you know, and I don't think anybody truly expects um, freshmen to go like Branham did. Um, but uh, he did, and he, he had an outstanding year. He's got another one that's probably in that, in that same boat. But he's also relying on uh, suing Zed Key. Uh, you know, suing's been there for you know. I mean, he's 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 an older guy, grad. Uh, you bring in Isaac Likely from Oklahoma State, who's who's an upperclassman who's been there. You bring in the young man from uh, West Virginia. Uh, they're all old, and they've done a nice job of of filling in, uh, recruiting like that. So yeah, he's he's. You know, I think anytime you've got new guys like he and I have had, you're going to have your some ups and downs in your season. And, and I think they were nine and two at one time, maybe ten and two after the Northwestern game. And you know, you you're going to hit a speed bump. It doesn't. It's just it's just it's just the way it is when there's new people. And um, uh, but he's he's a terrific coach and done a terrific job. Not to give away the scout report. Or anything, but, but what, what, are, what, are, uh, what, are, what are some opportunities you're going to your team's going to have offensively uh, against their defense? I mean, they're good defense. They're real. This team is as as physical a basketball team as as you'll see. I mean, they 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 all look like they could go play for their football team. I mean, they're big, strong, thick. Um, you know, um, and and you've got to. Um, Except that's the way that's the way they're going to play. Uh, for us, it's a it, it's we got to execute better on the offense. I mean, we've got to. I don't care what they do. We have to execute better. We have to screen better. We have to we have to have better timing. We have to make better reads uh, in our ball screen stuff. And uh, when we've done that at times, we've run great offense and we've been very very efficient. And we've gotten the right guy shots. Where they can make them in their spots, and uh, we've got to do all those things to beat this team. When you say RJ is simplified the game, like it sounds kind of, I guess, easy, but I'm thinking there's probably more to it than to just get somebody to simply simplify. Like, how did you guys kind of work him into that to, to just play hard like that? Yeah, for for RJ, it's been really simple. Play really, really hard, and and show everybody, uh, you know, his like he's becoming a, an outstanding, outstanding defender. You know, he's got length, he's athletic. And just worry about doing that. Don't, don't clog your mind with, oh man, I, how am I, I gotta make this shot, or put pressure on yourself to make every shot. And that's, the game doesn't find you when you do that. So we, we say simplify, worry about guarding, worry, and he has done that. And he's, he's taken great pride in just simply, I'm not, I don't want my man to score, I'm gonna do this and do that. and, and and it's not, it's not about the other end. And when you play hard, the game of basketball usually finds you and your shots go in because you're not worried about it. You, you, you get them in the flow of things. And now when you find that, now you can start running some actions to him. Now you can start creating opportunities for him because of, because of confidence. And uh, he's, he's, he's really worked hard at just simplifying. Now, we're, now, now we know that ball's going in so we can, we can do some things with it. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. We'll head down.